Hi again, I'm back to talk about what happens when the check results come back. Last video, we saw how checks work, how you can send one, and what the response looks like. But on a monitoring dashboard, you never see the raw strings returned by the remote agent, because the monitoring system converts them into graphs and colors and boxes. But what if we don't even get a response? Do we declare the target machine is down? Not right away. You see, there are two types of checks, host checks and service checks. Host checks only look at whether a physical or virtual machine responds to network requests. If we get an answer back within the timeout threshold, the monitor marks that machine is up. Otherwise, it's marked as down. Of course, a server might be up, but one or more services running on it, like an email server or ERP application, could still be down. Because there are so many services running on a single host, most checks we run are service checks, not host checks. Service checks have their own separate set of states. Why the difference? Unlike host devices where we just want to know whether they're up or down, yes or no, with services we want to know how well they're working. But wait, you might be thinking, you could also think of a host as just being slow to respond, why shouldn't it have warning or critical states too? The answer is that slow responses are almost always due to problems in the network, which are also modeled as services and thus have their own separate service states. Service checks don't just send back a yes or no answer, but a numerical range and the interaction of a specific check response value with the thresholds are what create those different service states. So by now, I've probably given you the idea that a check result comes in, we compare that number to the warning and critical thresholds, set the new state for the host or service, update the dashboard, and then wait for the next check. But there's one other thing to consider. Sometimes there are transient failures. For instance, a network is congested just for a second or two. Do we really want to immediately declare a critical state and alert every IT admin when the problem might be over before they even receive the alert? That's why the Nagios approach introduced the concepts of hard and soft states. These states exist to deal with this transient problem, and it's closely tied to the idea of a retry. It means that if a warning or critical response comes back, you should wait a moment and try at least one more time before actually changing the host state or service state. When a host or service has been working properly and stably for a while, we say it's in a hard state, which just means we're sure about it. Now suppose a new host check response arrives with a different state, down. Because it's a different value, we switch from the hard state to the soft state, meaning we're no longer sure. If the next check result is the same and we're in the soft state, then we decrease the retry count. If the count is now zero, we change to the hard state and reset the retry counter. This approach lets us change two parameters, how many times we repeat the retry procedure and how much time to let pass between retries. IT admins can modify both of these parameters. Typical values are two to four retries and one to three minutes between retries. It's a trade-off between how quickly you want to take action after a potential problem is noticed and how sure you want to be that it's not a false positive. In fact, if you're monitoring extremely critical services, you may actually want zero retries, so that no matter what, you're notified immediately. Once the retry count is exceeded while we're still in that same hard state, we can officially declare there's a problem. It's time to light up the monitoring dashboard in red and send alerts out. Next time, we'll survey the different categories of checks that you'll find in most monitoring systems.